My name is William Silversmith, and I'm the corresponding author for the paper Igneous, Distributed Dense 3D Segmentation Meshing, Neuron Skeletonization, and Hierarchical Downsampling. And today, I'm going to show you how to use Igneous using a sample data set from Kremi.org. We've downloaded a version of the padded uh, data set from Kremi, sample A, and we're going to use Igneous in order to process it. So I've already downloaded the HDF5, and I've placed it in this Igneous demo folder, alongside a script, convert.py, that will be able to process this data set into uh, a basic NeuroGlancer pre-computed data set. It is not part of Igneous, it just uses cloud volume to perform a basic translation of HDF5 into just the first resolution layer of a NeuroGlancer image. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So uh, what I'll do is I'll open up uh, this folder using the Sublime Text Editor. And then I'm going to open uh, convert.py. And here you can see we use a couple of different libraries. We use Cloud Volume, which is a library that I've written that uh, performs file I.O. for NeuroGlancer datasets. And we have h5py and numpy uh, in order to read these HDF5 files and convert those HDF5s into numpy arrays. And then we'll use a uh, cloud volume in order to create that first uh, set, that first NeuroGlancer data set. And so you can see here, we're reading in sample A padded. Uh, we're going to write both a raw, so that's the EM image, and the seg, which is the segmentation image. And uh, I'll show you how to get that started in just a second. We have to set up our igneous environment in order to be able to process this uh, data set. So generally, uh, a lot of people use conda environments, um, but I use virtual M's. So I'll show you how to do that here. So I'm going to say MK virtual M Python 3.9. And we'll call this something like IG uh, Igneous demo, or something of that nature. And then we'll have to install all the libraries that we'll need. So pip install numpy uh, cloud volume igneous pipeline h5py. I think that's all we're going to need for now. And there's a lot of little libraries that need to be downloaded. Good. So then we'll just start the conversion process. Python convert.py. And so this is going to write both the EM data and the segmentation data into the Igneous demo folder. And we'll just skip ahead. The Kremi A padded uh, has been successfully rendered into NeuroGlancer datasets. Uh, you can see that here in my Sublime editor, um, you can see that we've rendered the uh, 4440 resolution. Uh, you can see an info file that contains the basic metadata that NeuroGlancer uses in order to display a data set. Uh, so the raw, this is for the EM. You can see it's uint8 uh, raw, meaning it's just serialized arrays without any kind of special compression. And a provenance file that just uh, is something that's part of Igneous and Cloud Volume to uh, record like what sort of operations have uh, been occurred to the data. And you can see something similar for the segmentation. We've rendered it into a uint64 volume. The encoding here is uh, using Compresso. So that's a very high compression codec that uh, has become available recently. And you can see in here, uh, the data set has been chunked into lots of little cubes. And so you can see that they're compressed uh, using Brotly at this time. So that's the .vr. If it was gzip, it would be .gz. And uh, if there was no comp additional compression, it would be uh, not, there would be no file extension. So for some encodings like Compresso, you'll have 
uh, two layers of compression. The first uh, pass encoding, which would be Compresso, and then that bitstream gets encoded using GZIP or Broadly to get the highest compression ratio. So you can see that these are both here. And now we'll use uh, Igneous in order to be able to visualize them. You. And this is just taking a second because this is the first time we've run it and this is a Apple M1. And so probably Rosetta 2 is running in the background. Okay, so we can see the EM data is being displayed uh, from my hard drive, but you can also do this from the cloud. And you can see that this takes a little while to fill in just because only the highest resolution layer has been uh, rendered. And because we need to render two layers, I'm gonna open up a second server, just activating my virtual environment in a second tab, Igneous View, Kremi A padded seg. And we're gonna have to use a different port number uh, just so they don't conflict. We'll use 8081. And let's try to combine these into the same NeuroGlancer instance. And so for those of you that are not familiar, NeuroGlancer is just a web page uh, that is able to fetch data and then display it. It's uh, very good at um, economizing how it stores data on the GPU. And it's very efficient at using, um, it's very efficient at fetching data and displaying it so you can see I guess when it's not uh, decoding things, it's a little bit faster. But uh, once it's rendered, you can see it becomes like very, can become very quick. So you can see that the segmentation is correctly placed within, uh, within the EM volume. And we can do that by uh, changing the opacity here. So we can see that uh, they, it does exactly line up, which is fantastic. That's what we want. And so what are uh, our task now? So I've only used like an igneous shortcut in order to be able to, just, to allow these data sets to be visualized in NeuroGlancer. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to downsample, mesh, and skeletonize these data. So that way we'll have a full 3D representation that is uh, efficient to visualize. As the data, uh, we can see that there's still some deficiencies. It's a little bit uh, janky to move around and navigate because we've only rendered the highest resolution layer. Uh, we need to create some down samples. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to finally use Igneous for real to create some down samples. And so Igneous is a command line program that both creates uh, downsampling tasks, and it also has a mode where it consumes those tasks in order to actually generate the appropriate file, data file, image files. So with Igneous, uh, you have two options for where to place these tasks. You have uh, something called a file queue, and there is an SQS queue. So SQS is a uses Amazon's simple queue service in the cloud. And you can use that to distribute tasks to any worker in the world that has internet access and can connect to Amazon SQS. For other environments, uh, it may be more convenient, uh, such as like in this scenario when we're just using a, a single laptop, or if you're using a shared file system in a supercomputing center, you might wanna use uh, the file queue just because you might not even have access to Amazon SQS. So here's how it works. Uh, Igneous is a command line program. So we'll type in Igneous. You can, see, you can get help and see that there are different options you can do. Uh, so for us, we want to start by manipulating image volumes. So we'll do Igneous image 
and in our case, downsample. And so we're going to want to downsample, start with the grayscale EM volume. So we're going to create headed, and we'll want to do. So you need to specify a Q, and so the Q, in this case, I'm specifying the currently non-existent uh, directory Q, but Igneous will create it and will populate it uh, with tasks. Um, I don't think I need anything more than that. Info file not found. Oh, that's because I forgot to do raw. Okay, so here you can see that the raw data set was selected, four tasks were inserted to queue, and you can use the command line program PTQ status queue. And you can see that there are four tasks inserted, four in queued, and zero currently executing. And so we'll execute it uh, like this. Igneous execute dash x. This just means exit when you're done with all tasks. And so I'm currently using just a single processor in order to execute them because there's not that many, but I could have used uh, a very large number of tasks potentially. Igneous is designed to use uh, one process per a core. Okay, it looks like that's done. So it looks like yeah, so these servers are still up that are serving the Igneous data set, so I can just refresh Neuroglancer. And now you can see that when we're very far away, uh, you get a lower resolution downsampled image for the EM, but not for the segmentation yet. And so if I turn off the segmentation using uh, two, because it's the second tab here, and I refresh, you'll notice that it gets higher resolution as you zoom in. So now the interface is much more, uh, it's much speedier because it's being used the way it was designed. So let's also perform this uh, operation for segmentation. And we'll just execute against that. And so these segmentations smaller, so it should be fine. It should execute very quickly. Perfect. So I'll re-enable segmentation here, but I haven't re-downloaded the new info file yet. I'll need to refresh the whole page. The info file contains the new MIP levels. So now you can see that loaded almost instantly. And you can see how it loads as you scroll through the volume. At how these uh, data sets look on the file system, you can see that uh, the downsampling operation has generated many more uh, resolutions. So we started at 4440, it generated 8, 1632, 64, and 128. And so this is because the default downsampling mode in Igneous uh, does two by two by one uh, voxel pooling, but you can also do two by two by two if you were to add, say, the volumetric flag, but we won't do that right now. You can also see that for segmentation, uh, a similar thing has happened. So for uh, EM, we use uh, average pooling a two by two average pooling for each uh, downsample level. And for segmentation, we use mode pooling uh, because you can't average labels, it uh, is nonsensical. Also, uh, lo looking at the info file, which uh, describes the metadata for a given data set, uh, you can see that it's vastly expanded. It has uh, the fields for each of these new MIP levels. Uh, and it looks like I forgot to add uh, the encoding type. So 
the MIP levels for the segmentation are going to be a little bit larger than the, uh, the base MIP levels, which were encoded with Compressa. So I could have fixed that by using encoding Compressa, but I forgot to do that. All right, so now that we've actually generated the, uh, the new MIP levels, why don't we get on to meshing? So in the text of the paper, we discuss how both images, uh, sorry, meshes and skeletons can both be generated independently directly from segmentation. And so the order in which I generate them doesn't really matter, but generally speaking, most people will want to generate both of them just because you will be able to see uh, if your skeletons look correct with reference to the meshes inside of the 3D visualization. Because, uh, so Neuroglancer has three different fields here, an XY plane. Um, I always get confused as to which these are. So let's see, so this is a XZ plane and this over here is the ZY plane. And this over here is a, a three-dimensional representation of the data set. So I can click and drag and see this represented in three-dimensional space. However, because we don't have any meshes or skeletons, uh, you won't, it's not really that useful yet. So let's start by creating some meshes. And so creating meshes is pretty similar to the way that we created images. So first what I'll do is I'll remove our queue uh, just because I want to make sure that everything's set up and clean for the next operation. Igneous, help. So you can see we have a mesh subcommand here. Yes, mesh, help. And so meshing is a two pass operation. There's forging and there's merging. So we run the forging first, which creates meshes for each uh, section of the image. So for a very large image, uh, you can't mesh all of it at once. You need to divide it into cutouts. And so the forging step uh, produces, uh, runs marching cubes in simplification on each of those cutouts. And then, but the edges are set up so that they can be seamlessly stitched uh, during the merging step. and we're going to run the meshing step on segmentation. Uh, it doesn't really, there are marching cubes algorithms that work directly on uh, grayscale data, but they're not really applicable to the kind of problem that we're working on. So we want to mesh our segmentation. And generally speaking, uh, we tend to mesh, you can mesh at any resolution, but generally speaking, we mesh at a near isotropic resolution. So this is 4440, uh, and each MIP multiplies uh, four, the four nanometer resolution by two. So four, eight, 16, 32. 32 is pretty close to 40, so we'll use MIP three. So the highest resolution is MIP zero. So four, zero, eight, one, 16, two, 32, three. Indicate our Q is Q again. I think that's all we need. So now we're running a mesh task. This can take a little bit, so I'll just skip ahead. Fantastic. So now we're going to run the merging step. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. I was confused for a second because it didn't show that uh, there, there wasn't a progress bar. However, it looks like it did actually generate a task. You were able to execute the task. And now you can see that there are manifest files that indicate where to find the different fragments for each segment. And now uh, we should be able to just directly visualize the segmentation uh, by clicking on it. Hey, what do you know? We have meshes. Time to create some skeletons. And the process here is uh, very, very similar to creating meshes. Under the hood, you know, they're very different algorithms, but uh, in terms of the Igneous interface, it's very, very similar. So let's look at that help again. Igneous skeleton help. And so you can see we have both a forging step and a merging step uh, this time as well. We'll run the forging step first. And we'll use MIP3 again. And we'll just execute against the queue. And now you can see that we're running a skeleton task. Get that ex executed very quickly. And now we're merging all the skeletons. And they should be possible to visualize now. So I will refresh the page. So if I press the space bar, I can zoom into the, I can enlarge the 3D view. And let's change the opacity of these 3D shape, so that way we can reveal the skeletons inside. And so this data set isn't the most complicated. So these skeletons maybe aren't uh, you know, the most complex ones you could possibly see. You're not really seeing any of the very difficult shapes. Um, you can see that because we, I sort of glossed over the fact that you can specify parameters for the TSAR algorithm. Uh, which would allow you to make the skeletonization algorithm a little bit more sensitive to uh, things like this uh, nub here. So you might be able to capture that if you, uh, we had adjusted the parameters a little bit better. But as you can see, they don't look bad. Uh, you can see it, it does run a little bit, it does capture this over here. So depending on what you want, this could be good or bad. And uh, yeah. That about concludes the Igneous tutorial. Uh, I hope this was informative. And if you have any questions, please feel free to look at the GitHub uh, for Igneous, file an issue, or just write me an email. Uh, I'm always happy to help. So yeah, thanks for your attention and thanks for your time.